Political debates are high risk, high reward events. How you look, how you sound, the words that you use can mean the difference between victory and defeat. In this video, we're going to talk about how to prepare for a political campaign debate. Stick with me because I got a lot to share. What we're gonna cover is rather simple and straightforward in this video. The rules about the debate format and the rules of engagement because that determines part of your debate strategy. Then there's the matter of deciding what your debate strategy is based upon the rules and the format. And then there are some valuable tips I'm gonna share with you about how to prepare for a political debate. Stay with me, you will find this content immensely valuable. We're gonna start with the format questions that you need to have answered before you even begin preparing for a debate. Will you be sitting? Uh, will you be standing? Will there be TV cameras in the room? Will there be a live audience in the room? If questions are asked during this debate, will they come from the moderators or members of the audience? And if so, what's the mix? Is there one moderator or are there more than one moderators? Will the TV cameras be looking at you while your opponent is talking about you? All of this affects the way you implement a strategy in finding your key times during the course of a debate to score points on your opponent or with the electorate. It is impossible to prepare for a political campaign debate if you don't know the answers to these questions. The second thing I'm going to cover here are the rules of engagement and man, they can be bizarre. So let's say that you are participating in a five candidate debate. Each candidate is given 60 seconds for an opening statement. Each candidate is giving 16 seconds for a closing statement. Okay, now we already know five, each getting two minutes. That burns 10 minutes of time here already out of this debate, doesn't it? All right, and the point I'm getting at about the format and the rules of engagement here is ultimately what we're going to try and do is figure out the amount of time that you're actually going to be talking in this debate because that affects your strategy as well. So why do you want to know the rules of engagement? Well, here are the questions to ask. What's the format and, and rules of engagement is, is the moderator going to ask the same question every every time of every panelist. How long will the candidates have to answer that question? If the candidate says something that is objectionable to one of the other candidates on the stage, will there be an opportunity for that candidate to rebut? All of these variations go into the rules of engagement in almost any debate. And you also have to calculate what do they do if a candidate goes over time? Close off the microphone, do they ring a bell or do they try and outshout them? Another reason is you can't go into a debate without knowing these rules because without the rules of engagement, you don't know how much time you're going to have on stage. Now, okay, now that we know that and we figure in a five candidate debate, you're going to get all of eight minutes of pure talk time and at least four of those eight minutes are going to be consumed answering questions postulated to you or given to you by a moderator. It is in this way that you figure out what opportunities that you will have in a five candidate debate to point out your unique selling proposition to bring up an issue that may be of concern to a key demographic in your voting universe or the target audience that you're trying to reach. In other words, how can you shine in these moments during the eight minutes that you're going to have in front of a camera during this debate? All of this is my way of saying you can't figure out your strategy until you know the format and the rules of engagement. So make your staff get answers to every single one of those questions. Once you know the amount of time that you have to talk, that's the time to decide your strategy. And that starts by asking this question. What do you want? 
to get out of this debate. And I'll give you an example. I recently watched a debate by the, uh, done for the candidates running for mayor of Nashville, Tennessee. Nine candidates. It lasted 90 minutes. And I'll tell you, just sitting there watching it like any normal voter would have, I lost track of who said what. And son, the number one would answer a question, and you know, frankly, it was then another 15 minutes before they were asked another question. It just went on and on. But this is what I remember about three different people who participated in that debate because at every opportunity when they are on camera, they keyed in on what was their unique selling proposition and they made mention of it each and every time they talked, no matter what question was asked. Oddly enough, uh, this debate was about six weeks ago and I saw a poll in Nashville done last week and the three people who did best in that debate are actually at the top of the field. Those debates make a difference. Now, what do you decide? What is your unique selling proposition? Well, what is it? What makes you different than any other candidate in the field? What can you say that no other candidate is going to say? What are you for that no other candidate is for? What piece of the voters are you going after, particularly in a multi-candidate field, in a field like that? Remember, you can make the runoff or you can actually win the election with less than 20% of the vote. Your objective is not 50%, it's carving a piece of the electorate and owning it. So if your unique proposition, selling proposition is, hey, I happen to be the only African female running for mayor. And in case you haven't noticed that, here I am. But there are a hundred other ways to profit and talk about that unique selling proposition, the kind of people she served, the stories she tells, to let people who come from the African-American community know that she truly cares about them. Anyway, this is the point. In a multi-candidate debate, you are gonna get limited time during the debate. Your strategy should be highlighting in one way or another that which makes you different. If you like the kind of videos that I post, uh, be sure to subscribe because you'll get them instantly every time I post a new one. Fourth thing we're gonna mention here is how to practice and how to rehearse. If you don't practice, and you don't rehearse, you're going to have a bad debate. And I'm just saying that right out loud. These are not things that you can wing. What will happen is you'll leave the room regretting some really stupid thing that came out of your mouth the wrong way that you know the newspapers are going to take out of context the next day and are going to make you look like crap for three days. Or you'll get out of the room and you say, oh my God, had I only been listening a little bit better, I would have seen that what he said, he left himself open to a frontal assault and I completely missed it. And you'll kick yourself for that. So you want to avoid that, practice and rehearse. Ideally, this is the way I've participated in a lot of these with candidates and helped set them up and I speak from experience here. A couple years ago, we had a preparing a candidate for a televised debate, live televised debate, in a race for the United States Senate. The candidate blocked off three days of time, three weeks before the election, because he knew that this was a chance, a breakthrough moment for him. We put him in a hotel room on a Friday afternoon. We did not leave that hotel room until Monday morning. All we did for three days was rehearse. We constructed a little stage that looked a little bit like the one he was going to be on. We hired someone to impersonate his opponent, who was actually, he was the opponent during our rehearsal. We briefed this person that we hired on what we saw as our client's vulnerabilities so that he knew how to answer an attack when it came. We went through it over and over two major rehearsals on Friday night. We did two more on Saturday. We took a long break early afternoon, and then we did three more on Saturday afternoon. And after each debate, we would make him 
watch the video of how he sounded and how he looked. And he would find ways to better phrase what it was that he wanted to say. Sunday morning, all we did was clean up work. By then, we were worrying about just little things in his performance and the way he said. Now, here's the case in point. He did marvelous in that debate. He was so well prepared that he walked to that stage in total confidence. He smiled when he was at the podium because he knew he was going to have fun. But this is the key thing that he got out of rehearsing for that performance during the debate. He was able to listen and pay attention to what his opponent was saying because he knew he didn't have to worry about thinking of the answers because he always had the answers to the question in the back of his head. He became a better listener. Three times during that debate, his opponent stepped in deep doo-doo about something he said or the way he said it. And three times during that debate, the client that I was working for managed to get underneath the skin of a sitting U.S. Senator to the point that by halfway through the debate, the U.S. Senator standing at that podium was covered neck deep in sweat. That's the power of rehearsing for a command debate performance. It's worth mentioning that as that client of ours was leaving the debate stage, he felt his iPhone in his pocket buzzing instantly, incessantly as he was walking off stage, and the first chance he got, he opened it to see what was going on and why it was constantly buzzing. It was the string, hundreds of campaign contributions coming into his bank account as people went to their credit cards, pulled them out, and went to his website to contribute to his campaign. That is the power of a command debate performance. Each week, I set aside time to talk to people who are running for office or facing a particular challenge in their campaign. If you'd like to talk with me, click the link below, fill out the paperwork, I'll be in touch to schedule a call.